Shalom, dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Welcome to this Eucharistic celebration of the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today, we celebrate the sixth World Day of the Poor. For our sake, Christ became poor. With gratitude in our hearts, let us glorify the Almighty Father and our Lord Jesus Christ as we sing the entrance hymn. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers in the Lord, we are gathered here as one family to celebrate the presence of the Lord and to worship Him in our midst and the Lord wants to come into our hearts as well and this he will do at communion time and so we prepare ourselves to encounter the Lord and to receive him into our hearts by very humbly calling to mind our sins and with confidence turning to him for his forgiveness and together we say I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask that Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Malachi. The day is coming now, burning like a furnace, and all the arrogant and the evildoers will be like stubble. The day that is coming is going to burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, leaving them neither root nor stalk. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness will shine out with healing in its rays. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You know how you are supposed to imitate us. Now we were not idle when we were with you, 
nor did we ever have our meals at anyone's table without paying for them. No, we worked night and day, slaving and straining, so as not to be a burden on any of you. This was not because we had no right to be, but in order to make ourselves an example for you to follow. We gave you a rule when we were with you, not to let anyone have any food if he refused to do any work. Now, we hear that there are some of you who are living in idleness, doing no work themselves, but interfering with everyone else. In the Lord Jesus Christ, we order and call on people of this kind to go on quietly working and earning the food that they eat. The word of the Lord. Stay awake, praying at all times, for the strength to stand with confidence before the Son of Man. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When some were talking about the temple, remarking how it was adorned with fine stonework and votive offerings, Jesus said, All these things you are staring at now, the time will come when not a single stone will be left on another everything will be destroyed. And they put to him this question, Master, they said, when will this happen then? And what sign will there be that this is about to take place? Take care not to be deceived, he said, because many will come using my name and saying, I am he. And the time is near at hand. Refuse to join them. And when you hear of wars and revolutions, do not be frightened, for this is something that must happen, but the end is not so soon. Then he said to them, Nation will fight against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and blades and famines here and there. There will be fearful sights and Greek signs from heaven. But before all this happens, men will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to imprisonment and bring you before kings and governors because of my name. And that will be your opportunity to bear witness. Keep this carefully in mind. You are not to prepare your defense, because I myself shall give you an eloquence and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, relations and friends, and some of you will be put to death. You will be hated by all men 
on account of my name. But not a hair of your hair will be lost. Your endurance will win you your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers in the Lord, on April the 15th, 2019, the magnificent Notre Dame Cathedral of Paris suffered a fire. It was not totally burnt down, but it suffered quite a severe damage. And that cathedral was the pride of the French people, and it had drawn many tourists and pilgrims. And so the damage that the fire caused it created a lot of sadness in the hearts of many people, especially the French Catholics. Today, in the Gospel, Jesus talks about the destruction of the temple, the magnificent temple of Jerusalem. Jesus predicted not a stone would be left upon a stone. That temple would be totally destroyed. And that temple was really precious to the Jews because it was considered as the dwelling place of God, the house of God. God dwelled in the midst of his people in this temple. But Jesus predicted its fall, and truly, in the year 70 AD, during the Jewish-Roman War, the Romans destroyed the temple totally. Now what's left of the temple is just the foundation, the, wall, uh, the foundation which constituted what we call today the Wailing Wall. The Jews go there to pray for the restoration of the temple and the coming of the Messiah. That temple was destroyed. And I'm sure when it was destroyed, the Jews had the same sentiments of sadness, anxiety, like the French Catholics when the Notre Dame Cathedral was burnt. The temple of Jerusalem is about the presence of God. There was an occasion, and this is recorded in John's Gospel, when Jesus was in the temple and he saw business people, instead of worshipping God, transacting business in the temple, and he threw all of them out. And then he told the people, destroy this temple and in three days I will build it up. The leaders, of course, were not happy and they said, we took 46 years to build this temple and you are going to destroy it and build it up in three days? And John's Gospel says, Jesus is talking about his own body. Jesus was talking about his own death and resurrection. And Jesus is the true temple of God because Jesus is God made man. In his human body, God was truly present. God took up his dwelling amongst us through the body of Jesus. And the Word was made flesh, John's Gospel says, and He dwelt among us. Jesus was the true temple, that physical building of the magnificent temple of Jerusalem 
was believed to contain the presence of God, but God was really and truly present in an indestructible way in Jesus. And Jesus, by his death and resurrection, made the presence of God an eternal presence. He opened the kingdom of God to all of us. He took away our sins and brought us life. And in the kingdom of God, the presence of God is just eternal. And all of us are looking forward to entering that kingdom. But we don't have to wait until our deaths in order to enter the kingdom of God, to enter into the presence of God. By his death and resurrection, Jesus brought salvation to all of us and we enjoy, we enjoy the presence of God in our bodies, in our cells, here on earth. We enjoy a union with God. God is present in each one of us so that we are told by St. Paul, we are the temples of the Holy Spirit. We are the temples of God we have the presence of God in us because the Holy Spirit dwells in us. We have been baptized, confirmed. We have received the Spirit. And all this is made possible because God sent His Son into our world to become flesh, to dwell in our midst, yes, but to bring us salvation. So now we are temples of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter that the temple of Jerusalem has been destroyed. We are the temples of God. But we can also be destroyed. As temples of God, we can also be destroyed. We are destroyed when we allow ourselves to be overpowered by sin and Satan. That's our destruction. And what Jesus predicted of the physical building of the Temple of Jerusalem may be a reality for us if we choose to remain in sin. If we are not prepared to follow Jesus, if we are not prepared to turn away from our sins in order to be faithful to Christ. And to, in today's gospel, Jesus says, your endurance will win you your life. Meaning to say, if we are faithful to Jesus, we will continue to enjoy the eternal life that Jesus came to bring to all of us through his death and resurrection. My dear sisters and brothers in the Lord, let us not allow sin and Satan to destroy us, to drive the presence of God away from us, to allow Satan and his forces to take over from God. Let us keep faithful to God. And now we are in the 30, uh, 33rd Sunday of the year, coming to the very end of the church's uh, liturgical year and the church focuses attention on the kingdom of God. If we are faithful to Christ here on earth, God's presence remains with us and when the time comes, God or Jesus will come and lead us into the eternal presence of God in his kingdom. Amen. Let us now stand for the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten not me, one substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us may and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in according to the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the faithful. Jesus calls us to be steadfast and to endure in order to possess eternal life. With confidence in him, we offer up our prayers to the Heavenly Father. The response after each prayer is, Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the Pope and clergy that they may be faithful in their mission to bring hope and reverence for God and to be instruments for the Son of Righteousness to shine upon the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for upcoming general election that it will be a just and peaceful one. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the poor and deprived, that they will be blessed with food, shelter, and safety. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our parish community, that the privileged many will accord to the poor and deprived the respect and dignity deserving of a fellow human. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those affected by COVID-19, that they will find hope and strength to accept the will of God who gives eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who have died, that they may have the beatific vision in the heavenly home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. In silence, we pray for our personal intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. Pray for a Synodal Church together. We stand before you, Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, as we gather together in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life, and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, our effort in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his creation. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by this same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed. He himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood 
of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on those on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, at once the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, our Pope Francis, and our Bishop Sebastian, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world. Oh, that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
The second collection is for church maintenance. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of the sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. So first and foremost, we wish to thank Archbishop Emeritus John Ha from Kuching Archdiocese, Sarawak, to celebrate Mark with Earth. Let's give thanks to him. Thank you. So here are some announcements for our attentions. So thank you, Note, for the also stay flower seals. So more than 11,000 was raised during the listen, flower and candle seals for All Souls Day. From this amount, more than 1,200 was donated towards flowers for the departed religious. So thank you for your generous support and to all those who helped in one way or another during this time. Okay? So at least this year, we have a donation to our religious brothers and sisters and our priests who were buried here. Okay? So it is our way of showing our gratitude for their service and also over here. Yep. Family Life, our SMC Family Life Ministry, we have one talk before a renewal of our marriage vow at the end of the year. So this talk is about the sacrament of matrimony. How much do we know about the sacrament that we receive and have we lived it up? Okay? So this talk will be on 4th of December from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. over here in our SFX Hall. And then the following Sunday, we will have a special Mass co-organized with Parastic Marriage Encounter. It's a Mass to renew our marriage vows for couples yeah, to come together to renew their marriage vows before the Lord at this special Mass on 11 December at 5 p.m. On that day, free gift of decorated tender for couples will be given and a photo booth will be set up for couples to take photo after the Mass. So, at this time, we know that it's not easy, but we hope that couples can come forward yeah, to renew your marriage vows. So, to register for this talk 
S N O yeah either or but also better still to have the top and then the mask yeah kindly use one of the following ways you may fill up your registration registration form through Google form or contact one of the person in charge as stated there okay SMC appreciation dinner and the assembly yeah on 27 November so in the afternoon we have parish assembly then in the evening on the same day at 7 p.m. we will have our appreciation dinner at this uh, exquisite seafood restaurant at Percham from in fact the the notice the name list already out okay so the name list of those who have registered for the dinner has already put up in three places one in front of the church the second one at the canteen yeah and another one will be at the parish office so those who have registered for this appreciation dinner please check the name list and if your names are missing kindly contact this number and if you are not satisfied with the seating arrangement which the, the team try to arrange according to the ministry of BECs if you are not satisfied with the seating arrangement you can mutually swap seats yeah but inform your leader about the swap so on that day let's enjoy a great fellowship dinner on that day as our appreciation for those who have been serving throughout yeah 2020 until this very day and Kirji money lab collection i will be away for Kirji money lab collection on monday to wednesday so there will be no mass during this time let's pray for our Kirji that we may have a spirit led recollection and be recharged so it's important for us to come together so do pray for us at this time so last but not least we know that next weekend we will have our general election yeah let us pray at every mass on every day for our general election we pray for god's intervention so that we may select those leaders who are really sincerely serving our country so i also hope that each one of us who are eligible to vote to come forward for we need our vote to really select the leaders who can really serve our country sincerely and honestly okay so let us come forward to vote on that day as well as to pray for that particular day for god's intervention okay thank you so now is there anyone coming to our church for the very first time please stand we want to welcome you anyone come for the very first time please stand welcome two of you hope to see you again whenever you are here in Nepal. that's all please stand the lord be with you and with your spirit may almighty god bless all of you the father and the son and the holy spirit amen go forth the mass is ended thanks be to god let's now pause a moment to surrender our loved ones and all frontliners to say michael the archangel for his protection we ask the Michael the Archangel to continue to protect us and all over the world, especially at this upcoming general election and our way home safely at this raining season. As we pray, Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, trust in the hell, Satan, and all evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Good to see many of you, even though it's raining, but now it's still raining. So be patient and drive safely home, okay? And pray along the journey. Thank you.